My name is Brent Turner. I'm with California Association of Voting Officials. We're here today with the Open Source Initiative, uh, introducing our election system work. Uh, we do open source software for election systems, for public election systems, and we're proud to announce that the state of New Hampshire is the first state in the country that's adopted open source election systems, and we're hopeful that California follows suit and the rest of the country. For those that might not know, like what does it mean to be an open source voting system? Like how does that affect the people that go out on Tuesdays and vote? Like what does that all mean? Well, it, it doesn't affect their voting experience necessarily, although the architecture is a little different. What we advocate is a simple ballot printing system so that the voter makes their selections and a perfectly printed ballot is dispensed so that there's no voter intent issues. But the real essence of the code work is that there would be no mysterious parts inside the code, that the transparency is a friend to security so that the system itself is secured from any buggy behavior or manipulation. So this is what make it an even play field, no nonsense like happened in Florida many, many years ago. This is to prevent a lot of the confusion that comes, comes along with that's, that's correct. Uh, you're probably uh, referring to the 2004 issues where uh, in the Bush v. Kerry race there was 18,000 votes that went missing in Florida and of course there's been issues uh, throughout the use of the Diebold type notorious systems so we want to make sure those systems are changed out and a general public license version 3 open source system is implemented. And how do you go about like getting states to, to get on board? Do you have to like go to the capitals and pitch these these things? Like how do you get the word out that the system exists, it's been tested, it works? And how did New Hampshire come about signing up for it? That's exactly correct. Uh, part of the work is, is what you just referenced with politicking it and making sure that the politicos are familiar with the available solutions. Um, and New Hampshire, that was done by a fellow, Dr. Gilbert, who sits on the board of the California Association of Voting Officials. He received a grant from the Elections Assistance Commission that allowed him to fine tune the disabilities components of the open source system so that New Hampshire then at that point embraced it. They were very brave in doing so because the first state is always the hardest. Now we're working currently with California Secretary of State Alex Padilla, hopeful that California will lead the country along with New Hampshire toward the better systems. Have you gotten any backlash or negative like aspects of this? Like, because there's always someone's bound to complain when you take something into the digital, it's digital, you know, you're reporting on a, a machine, right? Like a, well, currently that is the system already. So we're already using computers. This is using just a different software code than the current systems. But yes, there is an intense backlash. That comes usually from the Microsoft intellectual property lobbyists and those that they can affect. So luckily, it seems as though they're standing down a little bit on this issue as it is a national security issue and fairly well stipulated the best security environment would be the open source model. And how long have, have you been designing this? Is this your, you've been working on the code? I'm not a designer, I'm in communications for the effort, uh, but the designs have been, uh, been in process since the early, around 2000, 2001. A fellow by the name of Alan Deckert did the original Deckert design, and then Dr. Gilbert, his design is very akin to that, so we all stand on each other's shoulders and continue to progress. The, the code itself uh, is general public license version three. So it's been like 14 years? And yes, it's been a political log jam, but now we're seeing that break apart a little bit. Uh, President Obama is uh, an advocate of open source. We just saw it come into the United States House of Representatives. It's a bipartisan effort. Uh, uh, Congressman Darrell Issa was involved in putting that through. Um, uh, OpenGov is one of the groups that were involved with that effort. 
the California Association of Voting Officials leads the effort on the election system front. So who's involved in that? Who's involved in approaching the states, capitals, and getting the word out about it? It's you're looking at them. You're that you that you're on, you're on making. I, I'm one of them. Yeah, it's it's a phone work heavy, but also we show up at live events and and uh, here we are. Nice. Is this your first year here at this event? This is our first year here at this event. We've uh, been at scale before. We're planning on going back there, and uh, we hosted a mock election at Lennox World in 2008 and did a demonstration of tough? the system. Is it tough to get? politics stuff where there's all this drones and things flying like literally flying around yeah things flying around uh, no it's not actually people have been quite curious they come by say hello to open source initiative we explain that they're the the holders of the standard for open source and we might work quite closely with them to make sure there's no business wise guys coming in to try to nuance licenses so uh, it all works out and we're glad to be here what's your like I don't know if it's a five-year, ten-year plan, but like, what, how, how fast are you looking to expand, and, and, and what amount of time are you hoping that states jump on board? Like yesterday, yeah. yesterday, we were hoping to get the systems implemented and deployed by uh, 2016. Now we've missed that mark due to the politics, uh, but you know, 2020 for a presidential would be great. Now that we've got New Hampshire in for the presidential 2016, I think that's doable. We're hoping San Francisco County falls in line by 2018, and uh, it's all within our reach. It's just a matter of, of continuing to develop the political will and expediting the solution. But people, as they become more and more aware of the deficiencies in the current systems, that seems to be the, the uh, situation now is that there is heightened awareness, so hopefully the solution will follow fairly quickly. Is this something that will be implemented where you can like, do it from your house to eliminate this going to polling places, or are they still going to have polling places? Or is there going to be like some websites that's working on little... that, So that, those are two issues. So the first part that we deal with currently is just making sure that the back end, the tabulation is appropriate, and then however you go about accumulating the votes will be left to the jurisdictions. For the disabilities communities and others, there is a push to have this available online or by smartphone, but that's a tad futuristic at this point. Uh, we're just going one step at a time. Um, we don't take a position on those issues. We'll leave that to the jurisdictions. But however it, it unfurls, we want to make sure it's all open source all the time. Very cool. Well, good luck, sir. Thank you. We'll need it.